What if feeling older or slower or more tired wasn't about age, but about a shortage of one small molecule that your body quietly depends on every second of the day? Well, that molecule is glycine. And it sounds simple, but glycine sits at the center of how your body sleeps and recovers and even defends itself from oxidative stress. And most people overlook it, but glycine is one of the most important foundational pieces of a process called glutathione synthesis. Because glutathione is that that master antioxidant that protects your body from cellular damage and glutathione is essential for almost all bodily functions. So before you go out and buy a supplement, watch this through because I'll go over what science actually says about glycine and how it can affect your sleep and your metabolism and even aging. And I also want to talk about when does it make sense to combine glycine with another amino acid called NAC or another name for that is N-acetylcysteine. And I'll go over what human studies show about the glycine combination because the data is a lot stronger than most people realize. And in the end, I want to go over proper dosing for glycine and I wanna go over glycine's potential side effects. And just like with any of my videos, even though I'm a physician, I'm not your physician. So please talk to your doctor before you make any changes to your supplements as this video is educational only and not medical advice. So let's start with what glycine actually does. It's the smallest amino acid in your body, but it's involved in almost every biological process, like building proteins and forming collagen. Glycine also supports your liver and it regulates neurotransmitters. And this is very important Glycine also plays a very critical role in producing glutathione, which is your body's main detox and antioxidant defense system. Glutathione is what keeps your cells alive under stress. Every time you produce energy, you generate reactive oxygen species, which are these tiny chemical sparks that can basically damage your DNA and it can hurt your cell membranes. So this is where your glutathione comes in. It neutralizes those damaging sparks, those reactive oxygen species, and it recycles other antioxidants like your vitamin C and your vitamin E. And glutathione also protects your mitochondria from oxidative damage. So to fully understand this process, it really helps to visualize how glutathione is formed. It is composed of three amino acids, glutamate, cysteine, and glycine. And here's the catch. Glycine and cysteine are often the rate limiting factors in this process, meaning if either of them is low, glutathione production slows down. And this is why glycine is so interesting. I used to think of it as just something that you take for sleep. But glycine is a major metabolic regulator that may also have anti-aging benefits. So let's start with sleep because this is where the evidence is the strongest. We have research in both animals and humans that suggest that glycine supplementation before bedtime can enhance subjective and objective sleep quality. There's also data that shows that glycine can improve several sleep parameters like improve next day cognitive performance and alertness and glycine can reduce sleep onset latency. Basically, it helps you fall asleep faster. And this is how it works. Glycine activates your NMDA receptors in your suprachiasmatic nucleus, which then leads to peripheral vasodilation. So what does that mean? Well, your suprachiasmatic nucleus is just a cluster of neurons in the part of the brain called hypothalamus. And this is basically your internal clock that regulates your circadian rhythm. Them. This is the part of the brain that receives light signal from the retina and it uses this signal to maintain your body's 24-hour sleep and wake cycle. So glycine activates the crucial part of the brain in a way that leads to relaxation of your blood vessels, which then causes more heat to leave your body and that in turn naturally cools your core temperature. And when your body temperature drops, this is when your brain gets the signal that it's time for sleep. But there's another amazing way glycine can help you with your sleep. Glycine Glycine quiets your wake-up neurons that use a chemical called orexin. So those neurons help keep you awake during the day, but at night we need to dial those down and glycine does just that. So glycine can help you relax and have restful sleep throughout the night. Glycine also helps balance out your serotonin and other neurotransmitters that help with sleep regulation. And on top of that, this is very important, glycine helps your muscles fully relax during REM sleep, which is absolutely essential because that's what keeps your body 
still while you're having active dreams. So all of those benefits combined is what keeps your sleep restful and lets your body repair itself through the night. But glycine's effects go far beyond sleep. It has significant metabolic and anti-inflammatory actions. There was a 2022 review study that showed that glycine may have a role in improving different components of metabolic syndrome, which is that constellation of insulin resistance and obesity and high cholesterol and high blood pressure. And this totally makes sense because glycine levels are often lower in individuals with metabolic syndrome or obesity or insulin resistance. So even though glycine is generally viewed as a non-essential amino acid because your body can synthesize it to an extent, there are studies that suggest that it may be conditionally essential in the presence of metabolic disorders like diabetes or fatty liver disease because then your body uses much more glycine and it may not be able to generate it in sufficient amounts. And there's multiple studies that show glycine's anti-inflammatory effects. But this is where we also need to pause and discuss another important component of glycine supplementation, and that is N-acetylcysteine or NAC. Some people prefer to take glycine by itself, but some say you should not take glycine unless you take it as glynac or glycine plus N-acetylcysteine. So what's the big deal? Well, if you recall, the reason glycine is so important is because it's one of the three amino acids your body needs to make glutathione, which is an incredibly important antioxidant that basically protects every cell in your body from oxidative stress or damage. The other two amino acids are glutamate and cysteine. So when you take glycine alone, your body still depends on cysteine to complete that glutathione synthesis. But cysteine can also be that rate limiting step. Because it's so unstable, cysteine is easily oxidized and it's usually in short supply, especially if you're under stress or if you have a lot of inflammation or illness. So during the times when you need it the most. So the argument is even if you flood your system with glycine, you cannot build enough glutathione without more cysteine. So it's like trying to build a house with extra bricks but no cement. And this is where NAC or N-acetylcysteine comes in. NAC delivers cysteine in a stable form that you're cells can actually use. And once your cysteine levels are repleted, then that's when glycine can finally become that critical finishing piece. So without glycine, you can't finish the molecule, but without cysteine, you can't even start the process. And this glynac combo has been studied in both animals and humans. There was a 16-week randomized control trial in older adults that showed that glynac supplementation improved multiple aging hallmarks, like mitochondrial dysfunction and oxidative stress. But what was even more amazing is that the group that took Glynac showed gains in muscle strength and faster gait speed, and Glynac helped improve cognitive performance. These are all important markers of healthy aging and increasing health span. And there was a small human study that showed that Glynac may improve insulin resistance in patients with type 2 diabetes. But one thing to emphasize, all of these studies were very small and short in duration, so the data on this is just not as robust or as strong as we'd like to see. Okay, so how do we decide whether you should take glycine or glynac. Well, the way I look at it is if you're young and healthy, your glutathione system is likely already working just fine. And in that case, glycine alone will probably do the job, especially if you're just taking it for sleep. But if you have any metabolic issues like insulin resistance, which encompasses things like diabetes and prediabetes and PCOS, or if you have fatty liver or high blood pressure or cholesterol issues, or if you have chronic inflammation or an autoimmune condition, well then in that case glynac theoretically would probably be better as you may need that additional bump of cysteine to complete the glutathione synthesis. Now when it comes to dosing, the most studied dose for glycine alone was 3 grams taken about 30 to 60 minutes before sleep. Glycine dissolves pretty easily in water and it tastes pretty sweet and it's usually very well tolerated. Now some people take mega doses of glycine, so they take doses much bigger than 3 grams and we do have some studies still looked at higher dosing. So there are studies in adults with schizophrenia where glycine was administered at 800 milligrams per kilogram per day and the mean daily dose was about 61 grams with a range from 40 to 90 grams. Now looking at the literature, glycine at 3 grams per day is generally well tolerated with only mild side effects being slight sedation. Um, but once you get to higher doses like 800 milligrams per kilogram per day, in the schizophrenia studies looks like that dose was still pretty well tolerated with no major safety issues. But
but these were small short-term studies. So I'll be cautious trying to extrapolate those results to broader populations. There are cases where high doses of glycine led to neurobehavioral changes and sensory overload. And in animal models, there may be a potential concern for cardiovascular and neurological toxicity. So as a general rule, I do not recommend mega dosing on glycine, at least until we get more human data on safety. And when it comes to Glynac, the recommended dose in published human studies was typically 100 milligrams per kilograms of glycine and 100 milligrams per kilogram of N-acetylcysteine per day. So for a 70 kilogram person, which is about 154 pounds, that works out to about seven grams of each per day split into two doses. Now, most people start much lower at around three grams per day and then increase it gradually. NAC by itself can cause gastrointestinal side effects like nausea and diarrhea. And you have to be careful if you have history of asthma or allergies, but in general, it's pretty well tolerated even at higher doses. But as always, please talk to your doctor before you take in any of these supplements because everyone is so different and it may require medical supervision. All right, I hope this was helpful. Stay healthy and I'll see you in the next one.